In the previous lecture, we talked about how we can patch a standalone SQL Server instance. In this lecture, we are going to talk how to patch a SQL Server failover clustered instance. So first, let's refresh our memory about the reasons that make patching important. One reason is that it addresses security vulnerabilities in SQL Server, it addresses bugs, it enhances existing functionality, as well as it adds new functionality. Now, about getting the current version and patch level of your SQL Server instance, you can use the select add add version T SQL statement, where here is an example of what you get when you run this command in SQL Server. So you get the version of the SQL Server, the current patch level, for example, in this screenshot you can see I'm using SQL Server 2017 RTM CU11 and it is the developer edition of SQL Server. Now, another piece of information you need regarding patching is the location of the resource database. The resource database is not visible in SQL Server Management Studio or in Azure Data Studio after you connect to SQL Server, but it is visible on the file system. In order to find the location of the resource database, you need to run this T-SQL statement in order to get information about its location. Now, let's talk about the flow of the patching procedure. Like in the standalone SQL Server instance, again, first you do everything on the test environment and you follow a preparatory procedure, the actual patching procedure and post-patching procedure. Then about the production environment, if everything's okay on the test environment, you get the go-ahead, then you follow the same procedure like you did on the test environment. Now about the preparatory procedure on the test environment, first you need to plan ahead, decide the patches to be installed, inform application owners, get approvals, and all these procedural tasks. Then you need to stop all application services that connect to the SQL Server instance, backup server operating system on all failover cluster nodes, backup system databases, that is master, model, MSDB, TempDB, you do not need to back it up because each time SQL Server starts, TempDB is automatically reconstructed. Also, you need to back up the resource database via file system uh, by using T-SQL statement earlier provided. You can find the location of the resource database files, that is the data file, the log file, and you can back up these files to a safe location as well. Last but not least, you need to back up all user databases on the SQL Server instance. Now about the actual patching procedure on the test environment, note that in this example we are talking about the two known to fail over cluster instance of SQL Server, but the idea is the same also in case you have more nodes participating to the failover cluster. The first step is to fail over all cluster roles to node A. Note at this point that minimal downtime might occur during the switching, so you need to inform users. Next, you proceed with installing the patches on node B that is the passive cluster node, and after the patch installation is completed, you need to restart the server. After the server is up, you fail over all cluster roles to node B. Again, note that there will might be minimal downtime during the switching. And now, your SQL Server instance runs on the patched node, that is node B. So this is the time that you need to proceed with checking if SQL Server on node B works OK. If everything works OK, then you can proceed with patching the next cluster node, else you might need to further troubleshoot or even rollback by considering, of course, this as the last resort in case of issues. Now, only if node B works OK after patching, you proceed and install the patches on node A, which at this time, this is the passive node of the cluster. After completion, you start the server as well. Then you fail over all SQL cluster roles to node A, after of course you ensure that the server is up properly, and then you need to check if SQL server node A works okay as well. Now, if everything works well on node A as well, that means that you have just completed the patching of the SQL Server failover cluster instance 
on your test environment and you need to proceed to the post-patching procedure. In a different case, you might need to troubleshoot in case of an issue or even rollback, of course, by considering this as the last resort. Now, the first step in the post-patching procedure, again on the test environment of two node fail of a cluster instance, is to certify that everything works well. So you need to check all nodes. You will need to fail over from node A to node B, check if everything's okay, fail over again from node B to node A and check again if SQL Server works properly, if the applications successfully connect to the SQL Server instance. And the next step is to get acceptance by all affected parties, that is IT users, application owners, etc., that everything works as expected. If there is a problem, we will have to troubleshoot in order to resolve it. And if the problem can be resolved, you can follow the rollback procedure. And you can see the next slide for more information about the rollback procedure for a failover cluster environment of SQL Server. There is an official Microsoft article thoroughly describing the rollback procedure in case there is something wrong with patching on SQL Server failover cluster instance. So you can follow this link and get more information about the rollback procedure. Of course, as mentioned earlier, rollback procedures must be considered as the last resort. It doesn't mean that in case you encountered an issue to just jump to the rollback procedure. There are several troubleshooting steps that you can follow in order to resolve any issues. And in the majority of the cases, with a little bit of troubleshooting, you can resolve any dependency issues or any other issues that might be affecting the patching operation. This video is part of my online course, Essential SQL Server Administration Tips. Check the video description for enrolling to the course with a major discount. Thank you for watching this video.